Michael, uh, you have to share. Uh, permit me to share uh, my slides, okay? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Namaskaram. Good morning to everybody. Our director, Professor S. C. Sharma ji, my colleagues, uh, our senior advisor, Dr. K. R. Rama, uh, assistant advisors, Dr. Sham Singh Inda and Dr. Vinita Sahu, panelists for today's webinar, and dear participants, we wholeheartedly welcome to this series of webinar on best practices by A double plus HEIs. In this series, this is 13 such webinar where we have invited the stakeholders of St. Joseph's College, Kerala. They will be speaking on the theme, academic advancement with the parental involvement and fostering of social responsibility. Friends, best practices of the institution should be innovative, radical and out of box thinking. It can be related with our seven criteria, and so you can relate with this some five pairs of P, which can provide you an enormous success and benefit while adopting these best practices. And those five pairs are number one, plan purposefully. Number two, prepare prayerfully. Number three, Proceed positively. Number four, pursue persistently. And fifth, very important, produce productively. These five pairs of P, if implemented constructively, will move ahead with the concept of best practices. The institution will find themselves in the path, in the path of exponential growth, benefiting all the stakeholders of higher education. So to elaborate it further, I request our senior advisor, Dr. K. Rama, madam, to enlighten us as of her experience of working in this institution for so many years. Yes, Dr. Rama, please. Thank you, Dr. Ji. Um, good morning to all of you and uh, welcome to this <coughs> program. Uh, my colleague Dr. Kaude has already elaborated um, uh, how uh, these best practices will uh, assist the institutions to enhance quality. All these days we were just talking on uh, in terms of uh, um, a sustenance more than enhancement. So now, uh, as we move towards the new education policy and the implementation strategies, uh, NAC has opined that you know uh, one of the important uh, aim and goal of uh, the new national education policy uh, in every vertical when you see uh, is to uh, make our institutions or transform our institutions to uh, towards excellence. So with this uh, taking clue from this and uh, in a way to prepare our institutions to move towards excellence and also uh, to enable um, uh, them to be self empowered and uh, introspecting continuously into the quality aspects of uh, uh, of their institution and also supporting the other institutions in the neighborhood we started this uh, initiative of best practices so it is uh, basically uh, to tell in a few lines or a few words um, we expect that institutions should build on their best practices leading to excellence in, in the institutions. And uh, the IQAC should play a major role uh, in uh, um, you know, disseminating and in trans, uh, translating these best practices uh, towards um, uh, better practices and you know, towards excellence uh, 
in in the institutional quality so they should be the institutions should take a self empowerment approach to this and also uh, the best practices should not be limited to one institutions uh, you every institution uh, should take a second advantage uh, situation that is uh, they have to learn from others experiences while implementing a good practice which may be uh, suitable for them so how do you really select or uh, think whether this is a uh, suitable to us or not uh, is uh, one important aspect which uh, uh, we want institutions to start thinking we don't want institutions to replicate good practices but we want institutions to take the uh, the so called second advantage which uh, normally is used in the software uh, terminologies in the early days like uh, when you implement a software how where, where are the pitfalls where it doesn't suit to us uh, or where uh, institutions has failed in uh, uh, adopt in uh, constructing a best practice uh, uh, so you learn from the experiences of other institutions and you don't lose your uh, resources uh, and uh, that is why we call uh, you learn from sharing and taking a second advantage uh, the other second issue what uh, we have uh, uh, thought of uh, why should uh, this dissemination of best practices should happen is uh, that uh, the, we have to revive our institutional social responsibility issue uh, disseminating or sharing your own best practice with other institution is a social responsibility of an institution similar to the provision of uh, education so we want to build this component of institutional social responsibility and uh, that is where you can uh, apart from the resource sharing this is a very important sharing of your learnings with other institutions uh, uh, makes you more responsible in building the uh, system as a whole to be quality uh, education system then uh, also we want you to collaborate with each other so this dissemination or through the sharing of best practices and learning from others uh, you know you you will uh, try to review your own practice and improve that practice which is the best for a particular context but there is always a scope for improvement so uh, these uh, these also act as a review forums where many people ask many questions and so some of the missing aspects of your best practices to better those best practices you may you will start uh, rethinking because we don't want anybody to just borrow a best practice and implement because these practice may have been very successful in one context but not be so much successful in another context so how do you uh, contextualize the best practices of other institutions that happens when you start uh, review forums when you ask external people to review your best practices to listen to your best practices and you also introspect on these and in, uh, improve upon them and also uh, this is a sort of a platform where you can share information on feasibility and adaptability of the best practices then apart from all these then we uh, finally at the end of uh, some time uh, after a, a good number of practices come on board we want to create a database of good practices national database of good practices uh, which can not which will not only showcase the success of our system the innovations which are happening at the institutional levels come to the forefront and um, you know uh, recording these evidences of success the database is nothing but we record the evidences of success and discuss within and among institutions so that it becomes a good practice to be picked up by some other institution so these are the you know major um, uh, you know aims uh, with which uh, we have started this series of best practices and we are going ahead of uh, with these best practices and uh, it, it has been quite successful uh, then uh, you know but uh, many institutions have been asking us okay you are showcasing the best practice of an institution you are asking the institution to reflect their best practice but uh, how do we adopt those best practices so uh, though we um, at this stage at, in this forums we are not going to explain you in detail to institutions 
but uh, there are some uh, basic concepts uh, the three uh, the four p's which uh, uh, kavde has already mentioned apart from that uh, to get focused you should uh, how do you get focused uh, to implement a best practice or a learning from other institution or from another department or um, of your own institution is first thing is you have to identify the best practice uh, whether you need a best practice or whether your own practice is the best or you and you borrow uh, some of the things from the other best practices and uh, integrate them into your own best practice called best practice and improve upon it for um, you know better results then uh, how do you sustain these practices what are the resources required what is the planning component required what is the preparation required uh, these are some of the things you have to look at uh, when you are implementing a best practice and when you think that is a best practice unless it is a sustainable adaptable practice you cannot call it a best practice the one time practice cannot be a best practice so you have to look at the sustainability of the best practice then you have to look if everything sets in place that is your resources are there your preparedness is there your the best practice suits to your context then you have to adapt those best practice and always you share this best practices start with one department or one uh, program and then you uh, slowly and gradually translate it to the other departments this is how you have to be uh, working in a very focused and uh, you know uh, pertinent way so uh, after you do this it is important that you institutionalize your best practice otherwise the best practices will be lost with the person who has implemented once he or she leaves the institution so it is important to sustain as a more as a part of sustainability of your best practice it is important that you institutionalize this best practices and make it an integral part of the institutional working then after institution uh, uh, in an institutionalization you also have to ensure that it is internalized it is accepted by all the members of your institution and uh, you know everybody uh, uh, tries to um, implement it and uh, with a little bit of modifications as per their classroom context so you have to internalize that means bring in an acceptability of this practice among all members of the institution then only you can institutionalize it so this then will become a practice of excellence making this best practice an excellent practice so you have to bring in an attitude uh, to learn to share and uh, to you know uh, to make a, to accept and uh, be part of uh, each and every activity of the uh, institutional practices that is why we need an internalization of uh, best practices this is the five stage application strategy which we were talking of now, so first you identify your practice whether it is your own practice of a particular teacher or a department or you take the practice from other institutions learning from other institutions when you go to other institution or when somebody explains from uh, other institutions or when a student says that this is happening in our, that institution why don't uh, you teach us in the same uh, take the same approach for teaching etc uh, it may be you know from any stakeholder it can come from any stakeholder so then you identify you read many go through the practice and you know uh, you look at its uh, suitability to your institution and you identify then you start implementing it and then you have to institutionalize it then you internalize it and you have to share by disseminating it to others then only the success story begins on your best practice so what i would tell is you know any best practice don't think that because of a best practice an institution is surviving it's not the strongest species that survive not the most intelligent but uh, the ones which are most responsive to change so best practices are an outcome of change management your preparedness to change this is what the best practice really comes from 
So when you want to change certain component of your institution, certain practice of our, your institution to give the best impact or the best results, and it gives the best results, then it can be called as the best practice. So the practice which is most responsive to change, which has the flexibility, which incorporates the limitations and challenges uh, to overcome the limitations and challenges the institution is facing. So all these uh, are called the best practices. So this is how uh, rather, uh, you know, uh, we, we try to look at your best practices. So NAC uh, in this series of best practices, it's an attempt um, of the NAC towards creating an awareness among the institutions which are not having, uh, you know, a clue on how to move and how to improve their best practices and also uh, to use their own potential to improve these practices, uh, um, uh, translate the routine practices into some adding some innovation and value to that practice, making it more effective. And, um, uh, you know, which will also help in assuring quality through a system which is primarily focused upon enhancement. So if you always look at improving your practice, you are uh, enhancing your uh, quality. That is what happens. And um, you help institutions build on existing processes and cultures. Best practices are not something very different. They are value added practices, existing practices where there has been a value addition to those practices. And also we, we aim at enabling uh, higher education institutions uh, to network and collaborate for quality improvement by sharing the best practices. And by doing all this, we, out, uh, we expect that there will be a shift in the culture of quality and uh, it will overall the system will improve by uh, you know disseminating good practices and uh, institutions becoming proactive to learning so i would say that you know hope you will agree quality enhancement uh, frameworks are not a system but it is a belief so best practices are those which arrive out of your belief and it's something uh, which makes you quite exciting and, uh, you know, best practices don't uh, come overnight. Uh, it's a long and complex journey because based on your experiences, you modify the practice from time to time based on the di because the diversity is the norm of our country, especially in the education system. Diversity is present in every aspect of institutional processes. So it's a long and complex journey and you have to keep on looking at your best practice and just don't think that one best practice uh, of an institution has led them for an A++ grade. No, it is not so. Uh, they have taken this up as a long and a complex journey and they have been continually looking for revenues to improve and enhance their, their own processes and uh, they have been managing change quite well. Uh, that is what uh, we want to communicate with the institutions and uh, um, our uh, premier institutions who have done an excellent job um, uh, in, uh, you know, um, in moving towards enhancing their own quality are uh, we are showcasing their practices so that, uh, you know, other institutions will benefit and get motivated uh, from this. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kavde. And, uh, I also wish all the participants to have a um, uh, very uh, successful uh, uh, discussions and uh, uh, participate, request all of them to participate proactively so that uh, they learn and share from the institutions. Thank you, Kaude. Yeah, thank you, Shama, Madam. It was uh, nicely narrated, specifically those five stage application strategies that is, identification, implementation, institutionalization internalization and dissemination which brings to result if it conglomerates with the five pairs of our fees that is plan purposefully prepare prayerfully proceed positively pursue persistently and produce productively there will be a big difference in the quality in higher education of the institution so to proceed further i request uh, our uh, assistant advisor dr sham singh inda to please introduce the panelists 
from this very prestigious institution St. Joseph College and uh, request them for presentation. Dr. Sham Singh, please. Thank you, Kavli sir. Uh, first of all, good morning to all the participants and panelists. Uh, to for, begin further with the program, uh, we have uh, two panelists which are from that prestigious institution, St. Joseph College, Devagari Kojakadi, Kerala. Uh, doctor, first of all, Dr. Sabu K. Thomas, having uh, experience of more than 28 years into teaching, sir is currently associated as principal of St. Joseph College. Uh, sir has uh, vast experience in terms of publication and research. He has around 47 international publications with high impact factor. He is a recipient of uh, two major awards. One is that Professor M.M. M. Ghani Award for Best College Teacher, which was given by University of Calicut, and Ben Chems Award, which was given by Ben Chems College, Changdecheri. And sir, major research contribution is in terms of uh, discovery of 28 new beetle species and unfolding the mysterious life of home evading machines beetle and the development of safer methodology for control. We are indeed privileged, uh, Dr. Sahu Thomas, to be as uh, you to be as a panelist in this best practice webinar. Second, we have Father Antono. Father Antono, having a vast experience of around 25 years in academics, he is currently the vice principal of the institute. The uh, domain area is into economics, and he has held various positions such as the director IQSC, the core member of the IQSC, and he has successfully cleared the UGC net and GRF. And he has around four minor and major research projects to his credit. So this was a brief profile of all the two panelists. Hope we all get enlightened on their uh, best practices as uh, perceived the institution. Now, first of all, may I kindly request Dr. Sahu Thomas to please uh, brief the participants about the best practices. Then I'll subsequently request Father Antonio to please continue. May I uh, uh, please uh, request Dr. Sahu Thomas, sir? Yeah. Good morning, and uh, thank you, Dr. Kaudia, for the very good words about me and the institution. So I start the uh, my part with the uh, welcome to each and every participants, prospective participants, and dignitaries of from um, Machadi and various academic institutes of the country. At the outset, our wholehearted thanks to NAC and uh, Machadi for this opportunity showcase the best practice of the college and also for providing us this platform to share our experience with the wider audience. And I acknowledge the support I received from the NAC team, Dr. Chiam Singhinda and Dr. Vrinda Sahu, who ensured that everything is in order with the review and remainder. And uh, our session is titled Academic Advancement with Parental Involvement and fostering of social responsibility. And that is the focus area of the best practice of the every college general. And myself and Father Ando, our principal will be, uh, vice principal will be handling the session. So we have uh, two sub-sessions. The first session will be giving a general picture of the college. Uh, the lesser known best practice also incorporated. And second session will entirely on the best practices. Then, uh, about the college, it is known as St. Joseph's College Calicut officially. It's a Christian minority institution established in 1956 with the affiliation of Madras University. Because Kerala was part of uh, <clears throat> the uh, earlier Madras presidency during British part. So it was affiliated to Madras University. But currently it is affiliated to the University of Calicut. It is run by uh, a Catholic Christian congregation known as CMI. It's the uh, first local indigenous Christian Catholic uh, religious congregation, uh, congregation of Kerala and other well-known higher education institutions, AMA congregation are Christ University of Bangalore, SH College Cochin, Christ College Iringalkuda, Rajagiri College Cochin, and Amara Medical College Pichu. Each one is an independent authority like that you can say, but it's all coming under the uh, CMA congregation. Then regarding the college, it is known as the, the name is official name is St. Joseph's College, Devagiri, Devagiri, St. Joseph's College. It is widely known as Devagiri. And it is in the Calicut town on a small hill known as Devagiri. That's why it is known as Devagiri College. It is one of the uh, most prominent arts and science college in Malabar region. 
so that comes from malabar region of kerala and the vast majority of the students are from the malabar and wayanad region and uh, its uh, official name is calicut is known as kolikod kolikod so it is a anglicized version is calicut the second largest city in uh, kerala and it has a long history it is known as a city of spices and it was the major trading point of indian spices so arabs they started trading with the region from 7th century so lots of arab influence is here and it was followed by the arrival of vasco da gama in 1498 the first european to land up in uh, indian soil and later led to the all the european colonialism and everything but this all brought in lot of see arab influence and the european influence lot in a particular kind of culture here and we have the students from uh, yeah so the students from all these hilly terrain here so i was talking about calicut it is there calicut is in the uh, southern part of india it's a coastal city and uh, here on side we have the uh, western ghats there so it is a uh, sandwich to between sea on one side and the huge mountain as western goal so some 40 50 kilometers of area here from this region we will be getting most of the western uh, sandal so lots of uh, agriculture from the agriculture family such as sandal then a lot of people are moved to the gulf region also you can see as you see this is a calicut here and the arab countries middle east so lots of the uh, first migrants to a uh, middle east region we can say it's mostly from the malabar region with the calicut as center so the arabian middle east influence is here at the same time we have the western ghat influence also there so together we have a community of uh, both agricultural and trading with people their uh, students sorry the uh, students coming from such backgrounds are here and then uh, we will go to the uh, about the college so the college is its a motto is for god and country that is our uh, vision so the our vision is transform the students and leaders good leaders intellectually competent spiritually intelligent morally upright psychologically integrated physically healthy and who can be agents of social organization so our mission is to build up a community of staff and students committed to the uh, truth and moral excellence then students should be having a self discipline with the good habits and then uh, all the kind of eradication of social evils so in general to uh, to make it brief to inoculate in inculcate in the students a sense of responsibility to the nation and create the task of building a new india and that's the uh, our mission uh, like about the campus here in the calicut we have a 60 hectare acre land and english fast with the st joseph school there getting then there is a lp school it's a aided government aided lp school then uh, higher secondary school then there is a cbse based uh, uh, cma public school then an uh, asha kiran school of mentally challenged and it does a great job for the society because uh, the mentally challenged kids and all the uh, the different families of the region it's a kind of social service institution like that then the staff staff quarters then uh, hostels for boys and girls and the uh, catholic church also so that is a campus in general then uh, what are the milestones I said it's uh, established in 1956, part of Madras Sonoma City, but now it is coming to Calcutta Sonoma City. In uh, 2004, when uh, NAC accreditation came, we got uh, agreed, and later it was followed by 2010 APLUS. Then in 2010, followed with the uh, potential for excellence, and 2014, there was a step-by-step -step progress, autonomous status, and then uh, CP second phase. that is sent following with the potential excellence twice and by uh, 2016 re accreditation by nac and raises to the uh, the first college in the uh, state and also in the country to become the to, to get the a plus plus grade and currently there are two colleges with the a plus plus in kerala and then nir funding in uh, 2018 34 lately uh, we got the mhr rusa support of micro grant So we are on the five hour band with the quality and hands 2018. In the year 2020, and now the flag is 60. Prominent alumni, various years officials, and then uh, there is a great uh, volleyball player, 
is the late Jimmy George. He was a student at college. Then the Tasman Neto IPS, the DP Kanaraga State. Then uh, Robert Bobby George, national DP coach. Then uh, <coughs> Mr. Arfan is a student of 2012 13 period. Now he's going to participate in the Tokyo Olympics also. He participated in the Olympics. Then there are two IAS students. Ms. Ashudi Ayes and they quite recently Ms. Sridhanya Suresh Ayes. So they are the permanent alumni of the institution. So the programs offered by the college, there are 90 new programs, aided programs and self-financing programs. The aided programs are shown in the camera and there are the PG programs aided and unaided program self financing Then there are seven PhD uh, program and departments are there. Also, Sunday is affiliated to University of Calicut. So seven of them. These are the uh, basic programs. Then about the student profile, we have a total students of 2,506. And out of which, are male students. Male students, the number of male students getting admission to college is less. And uh, you can see the UG and the PG among the females, oh, sorry. Let's say out of the 369 uh, PG students, more than 300, they are all uh, female students. And a few, uh, very few uh, boys are uh, getting admitted to the uh, uh, Pambit and uh, PD streams and all. Staff for fail. All together, we have a system of, uh, sorry, total of uh, 128 faculty members, out of which uh, 52 are with PhD. The number of PG, uh, sorry, there are, uh, it, it includes self financing stream and layered stream. Then, what attracts people to this college? Because we get, uh, there are a number of various factors, but basically, the most important two points are discipline and a good academic campaigns and the good infrastructure facilities, which are explained in the academic chart for the uh, next few slides. That's a very good campus. Then, a good performance in UniSnet handout, dedicated faculty. And coming to infrastructure support, in addition to UGC and CP and uh, USA for broadband support, but most of the science departments are able to get very good uh, financial support from uh, various departments, DST FIST, DST FIST in 2000, then again 2001, then uh, special assistance from the Kerala state government, it's uh, about 25 lakhs for the work department, then DST FIST for the entire college in 2012, then uh, once again, the special assistance for research and development from the Kerala state government is about uh, 30 lakhs, the institute department. And very recently, the DBT star support also, about 1.6 crore rupees. So, this is the uh, financial support they manage in the reach for gain. And the next is regarding infrastructure, we have a very good uh, ICT facility, very good number of uh, desktops, laptops, servers, Wi Fi connectivity and the number of computer labs with uh, 150 computers, then uh, lots of LCD projects for the teachers. Library. Some library, it's a total capacity of 350, and uh, it's on with the Koha software, and there are, number, there are computers with the free internet access, and then the implement uh, analyst subscription, competitive examination corner, and digital library open source software we usually do. Then coming to the books, general books, about 55,000 books are there. Reference books are 5,000. Then uh, back all is books and journals. Then CD, DVD, like that. Then electronic journals are many, e-books and e-journals. Then uh, there is a special collection of book bank textbooks also in addition. So a very good library, it's a spacious one and uh, very systematically maintained. And it is uh, one of the uh, strong foundation of this college. Then coming to UD program is pass percentage last school I have. So every year we'll be having a very good pass percentage of 80, 85, 90 for most of the departments. The new departments only, the number has come down a little less because the BC and BSc computer science is all uh, new courses. So within one or two years, we know that will be uh, 80 to 90% that number of the students also will reach. Then regarding PG, always we maintain about 90, 95% of the percentage is there. Then academic achievement of students, 
And that is one of the uh, key point of our institution. Our in Atlas is also everyone has got appreciated it. That is a UGC net jar of qualified students during 2017 out of the uh, 166 60s. Then in 2018, out of the 166 MS students, we are getting about 55. Then uh, 2019, 59. The department wise data. It will uh, show that it's a very good uh, number out of the uh, economics department. Here you can see department data. This program, the number of seats there. So in 2019, out of the nine, out of the 29, and then uh, 2018, five, and uh, 2019, finance department mm -hmm. out of the 2010. So likewise for each and every department, there will be a very good high percentage of because the number of uh, PD seats are limited. In our science teams only uh, 12 seats are permitted as for the and our species yeah, space also. Those who are the bottom 86 and are only 10 to 12. And there are every year uh, at least 112, 3, and uh, in small you can see 8, 9, 10, like that, and uh, chemistry. So this is the uh, one of the uh, most influencing factor as we have uh, uh, found to be the one which impresses most of the competition base. Then awards and recognition of faculty. As a research, I was, I, I, <coughs> at the, before I went to the principal, I was, I was awarded with the company award for best teaching in the university of Calcutta. Then uh, I got a very good recognition as the uh, coordinator for the BST service school in biology 2017. Then uh, Mr. Joy Storm, he was the best performer award from the IAS in Bangalore Organized and Mechanical for the workshop. Uh, Dr. Tanya Francis of the Chemistry Department, best post award for the Kerala Science Congress. And Dr. K.B. Thomas, he got a very award for translation for services. Then uh, coming to the students, they, <coughs> we get a very good number of meritorious students. DST inspired scholarship to number of students. Then Pradiva uh, scholarship, the state government to a set of students. Higher education scholarship, postmetric scholarship. Statement scholarship. So most of our students are having, in one way or other way, they're getting uh, funding and scholarships for their academic activities from one source or other source. Then coming to the research profile, we have a research center is seven, research guides 35. The scholars are current number of research scholars, they are uh, 79. Out of the 79, uh, 36 are with the fellowships, UGC, CSAR fellowships. And uh, so far, the institution has produced uh, 40 PhDs. And the major projects completed during last 10 15 years is uh, uh, 20 from uh, UGC, uh, then Kerala State Government, then Ministry of Environment for MOEF, and DSD self. Right? And then there are the uh, UGC and the KSST minor projects, still it was available 24. Then the current picture, ongoing projects of this 2019 2020, we have uh, currently a minor projects of 24. MHRD are also often supported. And then uh, two major projects, one from the DST and from the MOU, approximately 84 lakhs. Then uh, student projects, students based on their proposals, they get their funds from the state government. It's often the UGC CSAR research fellowships. These are the fellowships the students are getting. So with that, there are 36 uh, CSR fellowships students are working in the uh, college. Then there's one of the major achievements. This also the key factor of one important aspect of our success story. There are one, one or two publications in uh, Thomson IAS impact for the international journals. Then uh, 50 publications in uh, UGC Kerala list as non-impact for journals. Then as uh, new to the world of science, 28 new beetle species, five new plant species, it is nine plant species. Then uh, there was a uh, social uh, problem in the southern state of Kerala where there was a home invading rules and speech was facing a lot of problems. It remained as a puzzle and the institution could find a solution. Then recently, chemistry department, they found out that arachnid leaf sheet, which is actually a bio waste only, it can be a good source of cellulose for industrial use. Then our research publications during the 2020, 
there are eight international publications all in the with the ESA in that fact. In 2019, we have another 30 indices publications in the UDC care list and international general assembly if the DOA is given. So these are the uh, bottom outcome of our research activities. Then, as I was telling in the in between, there was a there was a, this a huge problem of particular BT rendering in the uh, residential buildings during the uh, long monsoon season of Kerala. That is, the monsoon season starts from uh, June to November, six to seven months, as you see in this picture. There are all these beetles will be entering the home, five to six lakhs in number, and they will be moving around, creating a havoc in the building. And what you see here. After one or two months of their continuous movement, they will be settling like inside the building, a kind of a sleep. And it remained as a, it is a problem affecting about uh, five lakhs of areas of Kerala. And lately, we found out there is an issue in Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh also. And there was no data, data about it, so how, why these people are coming, its habits, and how to control it. And we could find a solution. And what you see in this picture, it is a one. It is the Bangalore British collector during 1910, 1920, before independence and And lately it became a museum. And this museum, they are also, it is known as Palsiraja Museum, we are at Kaja Reviewerma, paintings are displayed. They are the same, Beetle was issued as a big problem. And the uh, institute asked for the, our support, how to remove the pesticides, sorry, how to remove the pests without using pesticide and all, because there are all these paintings are there. And we could give a solution to them. And that and the uh, search for the habits of this beetle led to the discovery of another beetle, which is almost similar in habit. And this is not an individual one or two case, it is affecting a huge number of people. And the uh, institution could uh, find a solution to this particular uh, issue. And what you see in this image is the Wikipedia article. Wikipedia article, the Wikipedia page, and there all the references are source references are. For this beetle, clearly on the based of uh, the work from us in this project, page two is quite well about it. The next part, there is the, uh, the uh, as a major contribution to science, discovery of 28 new beetle species from different parts of uh, Western Texas, Kerala, and different parts of India also later. And the botany department of the college, they could. Uh, Bring out nine new plant species. And there are a few plants, mostly from northeastern region of the country, for the first reports in India. These are the research contributions. Then from the chemistry department, well, you see this arachnid plant, and it's a sheet, it's a waste. It's, a, it's actually a, a, a kind of bio residue like arachnid leaf sheet and arachnid husk. And from the arachnid uh, leaf sheet, the cellulose can be extracted, and the methodology for that is particular uh, extraction of cellulose and its utility as a source of cellulose. It has been uh, followed by an MS student's work with uh, Dr. Tanya Francis, and that led to another international publication. And this is a process making use of an agricultural waste material, how arachna, arachna sheet can be used as a source for cellulose in case and all. Then, Coming to the consultant service, <coughs> during the rainy season, we get a lot of phone calls and email messages about the invasion of that nuisance beetle from different parts of the country. We are totally surprised the last call was come from Bangalore. And there are a lot of, many people are, and uh, see there the web articles are getting a lot of coverage. So it's a kind of a consultancy as far as this whole department, the web technology is located. Then, identification of plants. It's the duty of the uh, botany department is handling that. Then, statistical analysis services, SPSS, mostly based on SPSS, or statistics department, and the economics uh, teachers, economics teachers with economics background, they are quite familiar with that. So, they are giving uh, consultancy for the past 10 to 15 years. Then, translation in the Hindi and French department doing that. Then, our librarian is a quite well, well person in a Koha software for. He started uh, practice from 2005 onwards. 
So he is a kind of authority who always is different type of ways and helping also. So this is a kind of consultancy software being done by this uh, college. And then another achievement we consider us. The, uh, we became the host for this uh, DST service for insect biology. It's an all India program sponsored by the DST sir, with the faculty and decided by the DST committee itself. So we could bring in the country's top notch scientists in this institution. And uh, this workshop, Service School Insect Biology, as they say, as it included a selection of 25 resources. Certain researches by the DST sir, the one committee selects them with uh, two from each state. And uh, all those NSTs we hear from Manipur, Assam, Pakistan, Bihar, Kashmir, very, very, very here. And uh, they were all uh, trained by the uh, topmost scientists of this country. So it became, yeah, we consider us a kind of recognition for the institution. So that is about the research. Next, we are coming to the uh, sport facilities. College is having a very spacious, newly tough football ground. And then eight lane horned meter stadium. And this is the land, this is the ground where Kiki Usha, in the beginning years, she was with her his, uh, coach Namdia, her was a runner here, then a sports pavilion, then multi nation, basketball court, volleyball court. Then our achievements, aggregate university championships for 26, total number of India representation. 27, then a state university, state and university level medal winners, 231 in the last five years, then two Olympians. This is a recently tough to the same football ground. And then a major achievement 2019 to 20. We have uh, students as part of the old university shuttle bandman championship, and then uh, they and I are in the uh, old you know, subtle government championship in Canada. Then they were Prasad, participating in overseas deployment camp in different foreign countries visited. And this is our the, uh, most uh, precious one, that is Olympian Katie Ulfan, a young boy who started training in this uh, college, studied here. Then position he got in the London Olympics 2012-13 period. And later, now he is selected, qualified for the next Olympics also. Then another youngster, Noah Nirmal Thong. And uh, he, is, uh, he participated in Asian Junior Athletic International for silver medal. Now he is also selected for the Tokyo Olympics. So this is the, uh, the first Olympic, the Fan KT, 20 kilometer race walk, 10 to question for the Olympic Olympics. So he started his walk from here. And then uh, we have one Olympian with the Fan, and then uh, one Arjuna Award winner, uh, Jimmy, late Mr. Jimmy George. He's a volleyball player, and then uh, his brother Robert Bobija, he got a Donacharya award winner again. So, these are the uh, our precious uh, success stories. Then, the international national participation, you can say lots of numbers and names are here Colombian, in 2010, then Agil Johnson, national athletic, then uh, Sajay OIS, Indian Youth Volleyball Team, 2013. No normal, normal Trump will be participating in uh, Tokyo Olympics, as I already said. Then uh, Anu J is volleyball, the person in the Asian junior volleyball. Fasil KM, volleyball, the person in India, volleyball. Arunjad, Indian military team member, he is a world military talent to participate. Anigriha, Indian junior badminton woman team member, he is also an Asian junior badminton talent to participate. The college is having lots of international national participation sports. Then, this is a venue for, with our excellent facilities, uh, <coughs> venue for almost all the activities that is coming to uh, this part of the country. Major tournaments organized, Calcutta University Athletic Meet, Calcutta University, uh, University Meets all in, uh, for many years, they used to conduct here. Then, all Kerala Inter College T20 Cricket Tournament, then there is a basketball tournament, all Kerala then volleyball tournament. So, it's a venue for almost uh, all these programs. Then, uh, <coughs> Achievements already have. Then we have the collaborators for the sports, sports uh, size, sports other people in India. Then Kerala Sports Council, District Sports Council, that is World Code District Sports Council. Then Football Association, Basketball, Athletic Cricket Association. Are, almost all the uh, sports activities and their associations will be uh, uh, 
good collaborators of this college using this facility. Then we were getting, we were able to get lots of funds. Physical education department, we get lots of funds. And uh, with the funds, they could uh, bring out a good outdoor stadium. There is an MVP. Then uh, there is a construction of indoor stadium which is going on 70 lakhs. Sports activity as well as PTA. Every year they used to give nearly 2 lakhs per year. That is, parents of the, uh, this particular college, their contributions. Then the sports facility maintenance, college management every year, scholarships. So this is how the funds thing. And this is a proposed indoor stadium. And within another two or three years, it will be completed. And it will be given because we have five to six months of rain in Kerala and June to November. So sports activities are being and we are hopeful of making use of this particular stadium during the period. Then the physical education department is another activity that they introduced yoga course. Even before the declaration of international yoga day and all the, the, the recent uh, popularization of yoga, before that itself started the course. And every day we have the time, sorry, uh, there is a yoga class here for one of our international yoga day celebration also there. And that's what we see. Then another activity is that uh, in the uh, fifth semester, the lead students, they have an open course by the name, introduced a course, name of the course, physical fitness and health and wellness in the software for our students. With uh, instructional ways three per week. And the aim is to learning experience students for realizing the importance of physical fitness, health, well-being, and overall health, how it helps overall department. So we are having a very good demand for this particular course. And extension activities. So it's not only the college students alone, the surrounding families, various associations, and the residents of all these, sorry, Calicut City in general. And uh, we have coaching camps. The college will be organizing coaching camp, cricket coaching camp for school children during four days. And then uh, there is a football camp. And this will be motivating the youngsters. Then the college ground is being used for a number of annual sports and cultural trials and training for training uh, programs of various organizations, including the Alaska Police Department also. Then sports of other India, they use it as a student's practice camp. So that's about the sports week. Then coming to performance in university arts and sports. <laughs> Calicut is very well known for, Malabar region is very well known for its love for music and uh, most of the Kerala Malayalam movie actors, uh, directors and other artists from uh, from Malabar region, song writers, movie directors. So it's a peculiar culture in the uh, northern part of Kerala, especially Malabar and so there we can see the college has become a kind of a starting point for many schools also. So from the schools they come out with all the uh, with aspirations and technology is the great platform. In 2018-19, we were the winner, Sona level and the most level. And then uh, previous year, first runner. So it's either a winner or a first runner because this is the situation for the past two, five, ten years like it's going on. Yeah, it's about the uh, last year's victory. We saw an arts championship in the newspapers. Then arts question, what are, what are the major achievements? We will be getting national uh, university arts festival, state level participation, finalist, second, first participation, like that. So the uh, different, different programs. So we have very good uh, representation in the uh, BISO and arts championship and the activities also. And student placements. We started the uh, college student placement uh, activities are actually going on. A number of organizations are coming to and we have a various organizations like the South Indian Bank, which is great. And we provide PCL civic services. They are also very useful. Extension activities. Additionally, the uh, coordination of various extension activities are there. The one is activity the blood donors for. Then uh, quality analysis of drinking water. The people of the region they are very much more of the, <coughs> see, uh, they are quality of well water. So the institution gives support to. Uh, then uh, donation of hair making for wigs for cancer patients undergoing chemotherapy. And uh, it was an activity where you can see this image on one side the students, young girl students, they are willing to give to need to need to this and to their care for this particular uh, a compassionate, compassionate gesture. 
വേറെ ക്യാൻസർ പേഷ്യൻ്റ് കാലിക്കറ്റ് മെഡിക്കൽ കോളേജസ് and then we'll call. and what is he here is one student who was having a tax shed like a very uh, uh, a house you cannot say it's a house like that and the college students were able to uh, do this great service so there are a number of uh, extension activities like that a house for a friend which we by what to highlight it then village adoption program by social work department we go to the needy village rights and other sandal right to help us what is the last trick was kerala fives and uh, the region here the uh, wayanad region and the other place in north south and the area of the fives so the student uh, calicut also was on the water to some extent students we are willing to help the community and they <coughs> managed to collect a lot of items and uh, they distributed them so lead students uh, kerala during the kerala fives student initiative was set for this in the complete activities this also the lead activities the lorry factory to all the packets they are very into the lead line then recently when this covid uh, she came up initial phase there was a severe sanitary sanitizer shortage and uh, our chemistry department took the research work to the facilities on the then <coughs> contributed whatever is possible by making the sanitizers and the need to be a district collector to well appreciate the initiative and later a number of other institutions also taken it it was a good service by the institution it became the role model for many in the region then coming to the uh, next part next to what we can see is the result with the mhrd and the rusa support the college has uh, started certain interdisciplinary courses there are six courses starting with the statistical data analysis on realizing the importance of statistical data analysis for the bsc mosc students also so we aim to start one for the biology and the social students with cases and another one for the uh, mathematics and commerce students with our software then uh, foreign language studies then there is another one is ssb training for ncc kids ssb training by army officers because the army unit is here the enhances placement opportunities of ncc cadets because ncc cadets after the degree course and their ncc program they are not having a much clear idea about what exactly to do with their ncc program so they are helped then the fourth one where the ornamental fish farm so this is one of the range of the college like you know, we have it like a lot of soilies are going here and there's a huge demand for fish also so ornamental fish farming as a technique where uh, anyone can get training and they can uh, start their own small scale uh, ornamental sort of fish farm and then uh, it will lead to health employment opportunities there is region which is rich in water and there are a lot of critical uh, say as a total the nearby hilly regions and all they have a good climate and there are various crops you know they are not so commercially uh, successful now so in these areas this we expect to be a good source of uh, employment opportunity for the youngest this college so along with the degree and the post graduation they'll get their ornamental fish farm training also then plant propagation and the terrace farming techniques also that is the terrace of various urban area setting up of a small uh, vegetable gardens in the zone using hybrid variety of vegetables uh, and all and opportunity in the urban area open to the skilled courses in terrace farming garden so training for the students of the college they can be commerce student or mathematics student or botany or any some multidisciplinary subject so these are the uh, uh, our uh, next hockey area like that so we hope that it will lead to employment generation in future so these are the uh, in general about the as i mentioned at the beginning we have various practices 
and the best practice will be uh, explained in the second session, that is the next session. So here after the, so with this uh, few words about the lesser known or uh, we call it as the uh, our, uh, other best practices. I request your father and our vice principal to explain about the best practice of the Thank you. Uh, distinguished uh, dignitaries, uh, respected NAC officials, uh, the organizers of uh, the webinar, respected principals, IQC directors, and my dear teachers, a good afternoon to one and all. Uh, myself, Father Anto, a director, IQC. St. Joseph's College, Devagiri. At the outset, let me extend my sincere gratitude to NAG for giving us such a wonderful opportunity to showcase uh, our best practices uh, to the teaching community all across the country. If somebody asks me, what is the best thing that happened to Father, you may maximize the presentation and go ahead. Yes, yes. Yes. Uh, if somebody asks me what is the best thing that happened to higher education uh, in our country, especially uh, post independence period, I would say without any doubt that it was back. Because uh, we have all, all of us have seen that uh, qualitative transformation that happened to higher education, uh, whether it is in the field, uh, it is in the quality of uh, syllabus, or teaching or learning, or research, or the infrastructure facilities. We can see a substantial qualitative change in the higher education. So uh, it gives me immense joy to be part of uh, uh, this. Uh, 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 webinar series on best practices uh, uh, organized by NAC. And today I would like to present before you seven best practices that we have developed and successfully implemented in our institution uh, during the last few years. Before going to the best practices, I should say that uh, in the formation of these best practices in our campus, we draw inspiration from the vision and mission of our college, uh, which is uh, clearly reflected in our motto, Pro Deo et Patria, for God and for the country. When we uh, stand for God, it tries to say that uh, we declare 
uh, that we stand for love, we stand for truth, equality, and we stand for universal brotherhood. For instance, uh, through one of our best practices, namely social sensitization through blood donation, uh, we try to teach the students that it's the same blood that, uh, that flow in the veins of all human beings, irrespective of the caste, color, creed, culture, and so on. So as we say, our institution stands for the country. Uh, we are committed to uphold the noble values of the country, the democracy, unity, and diversity. And we try to uphold its great heritage. And we, tried, we try to mold responsible and competent uh, citizens and thus contribute to the national development. So with a small introduction, I would like to move on to our best practices. So today, um, I would like to talk on uh, seven best practices I have already mentioned. Let's begin with uh, the first uh, best practice, uh, that is mentoring with parents. Uh, due to high uh, reputation it enjoys, St. Joseph's College Devagiri has been one of the most sought after institutions for higher education learning in Kerala. Only the best students manage to get admission to the programs of the college. But our expectation uh, and our experience shows that a number of students fail to put in their best in academics, nor they are able to end up in good careers. Due to deviations and loss of motivation uh, uh, during the college days, maybe, uh, students who are relatively weak in studies might find it, find it difficult to keep up with the rest of the class. But certain other um, students with the family problems tend to withdraw to themselves and seek consolation in unhealthy relations and drugs. Uh, the parents uh, who would closely monitor the academic performance of their children during their school days are often reluctant to continue with the same interest when they are in college. So in the past, we were under the impression that it is not fair to intervene the personal space of the students as we do during the school days, since they are already grown ups and teachers focused more on their teaching alone. However, over the years, we realized that even the best of minds need compassionate accompaniment in every walk of life, since they are going through many challenges that they can't fix themselves. The institution started to address the issue with a well-structured and actively practiced tutorial system. Uh, our experience uh, testified that the tutorial system may fail to produce the desired result without the active intervention of the parents. Thus, the accompaniment with the student by the teacher is extended to home, where the role is taken by the parents. It is impossible to guide the students properly without the support and involvement of the parents. Hence, uh, the college opted for a merger of two proven practices, namely class-wise PTA meetings and tutorial system into a new initiative called Mentoring with Parents. Mentoring with parents is precisely a practice that established a three-way relationship. Student to the tutor, student to the parent, and parent with the tutor. And the objectives of the practice. The specific objectives of the practice uh, are the following. To ensure a collective effort towards the all-round development of our students, to provide the tutor concerned the opportunity to know his tutor students better, with their strengths, weaknesses, career aspirations, and family background, to continuously monitor and guide the students' academic and career progression, and to provide the parents a platform to closely involve in the academic and campus life of the students to track their performance and also the deviation. And the practice, when we come to the practice, mentoring with the parents was uh, conceptualized uh, and developed into a concrete model for effective parent involvement in the institution's student support initiative. A group of 30 students in case of UG and 15 in the case of PG are assigned to a tutor. On the induction day, the tutor meets his or her students along with their parents and explains to them the institutional practice of mentoring with the parents. The, con the contact details of the tutor are given to the parents and they are asked to keep in touch with him. 
Every tutor maintains a good relationship with his students and their parents. The tutorial record of each student is maintained in a pre-designed performer wherein his or her personal details, including the contact numbers of parents and the performance of the students in terms of attendance, internal and end semester examinations are properly recorded. Every day, an hour is allotted for the tutorial meeting after the regular class time. Regular classes ends at 3.30 and uh, the, the, uh, from 3.30 to 4.30 is devoted for mentoring. According to a pre-designed schedule, the tutor meets his students individually and as a small group and discusses all the difficulties relating to their studies uh, uh, and campus life. And all the relevant information collected during this meeting will be properly recorded in the tutorial record. Class-wise PTA meetings are held at least once a semester. Parents will be properly informed to the time of meeting well in advance. The external as well as the internal marks scored by the above relative, uh, about the relative performance of his or her ward. The details of students' attendance help the parent to monitor students' regularity in classes and can interfere if the student is found to be irregular. Parents are encouraged to comment on the academic and other aspects of institution. It helps us to make corrections wherever required. These meetings are also used to collect the feedback of parents about the college. Parents are also briefed uh, on the activities and achievements of the students. And those students who have excelled in academic and non-academic activities will be honored during that function. After the formal, fu formal function, each of the students will meet his or her tutor as well as all other teachers in the department along with their parents. This personal meeting of the parents with the tutor is a great occasion for parents to get feedback of their children and strengthen their rapport with the tutors and other teachers. The tutor uh, may decide. The tutor may decide uh, to meet any student or parent in person if he or she feels the need for the same. When a student is found to be demotivated or deviated, the tutor and parent collectively work out corrective measures and extend necessary support to the students. If found necessary, with, with, the, with the consent of the parents, students are directed to the college counseling center for sessions with the professionally qualified counselors. If students are found to be irregular in class, parents will be intimated by the tutor. Uh, the system has been further strengthened with the introduction of campus automation software. The, so the, the software provides parents and tutors with the facility to track online the attendance and performance of the students in different subjects through the student's portal. And uh, evidence of uh, success. Since the launching of this practice, uh, parents show greater interest uh, in academic affairs of their children. Better interaction between parents and teachers contributes positively towards the performance of the students on one hand and towards the improvement of teaching learning process on the other. I would like to move on to the second best practice uh, that is all set for NET. Our college is fortunate to get the best students for postgraduate programs from across the state and even outside. The past percentage of NET JRF examination has become uh, a yardstick to measure the quality of postgraduate education in the country. Therefore, as we try to improve this percentage, automatically the quality and standard of postgraduate education will enhance up to the expectations of UGC. Also, as we have evaluated the career ambitions of postgraduate students, we realized that a majority of them aspire to become teachers in higher education, become, and become hardcore researchers, or to become teachers who are also doing research. Net JRF CSIR examination is a threshold which opens up opportunities to the aspirants for lectureship as well as research. It was also found that many students go for net coaching after completing their post-graduation, which cost another year a lot of money. 
Therefore, the practice of conducting net classes would be a great help to equip the students clear net examination along with their graduation. And the objectives are given here to provide career orientation to all our postgraduate students and motivate them towards careers of teaching and research. To provide input, both academic and infrastructural, to equip them for net JRF examination. To contribute to the process of knowledge creation by directing more number of students with the caliber and right attitude towards research. And the practice. When we come to the practice, all set to net is a concerted practice which includes career orientation, syllabi modification, academic support, and incentives. We have uh, split up the practice into orientation, uh, syllabus, coaching classes, access to materials, and incentives. At the outset, the freshers in the PG program are given an orientation in which the prospects of teaching and research careers are adequately uh, communicated. With a view to ensuring the quality of syllabi and to facilitating the students' uh, preparation for net examination, every Board of Studies is asked to fine-tune its syllabi in line with the syllabi for net JRF examination. Thus, once a student covers the syllabus while doing the graduation, he, he unknowingly covers the topics given in net examination as well. With the support of the funds received from different sources, the college organizes classes on general purpose as well as particular subject. While coaching uh, on general papers are delivered centrally, departments are directed to arrange classes for their subject purpose with the support of internal faculty and external experts. Last year, nine PT departments in our college uh, conducted net coaching on their respective subject inviting the best resource uh, available from outside and from within the college on Saturdays and Sundays. Totally, we provided net coaching for a total of 960 hours to the students. Total number of participants were 550. Out of that, around 300 students were from other colleges. The college has also set up a separate section, namely Net Corner, in the library with a good collection of standard textbooks and course material for the next examination. As, and some of the key uh, postgraduate departments have restructured their continuous evaluation systems by including questions which test the conceptual clarity and familiarize the students with the net examination pattern. Successful candidates are uh, duly honored uh, by the college in special functions which are attended by all the post graduate students. Uh, the college PTA um, has instituted cash prize to those who qualify that day out of examination. And also their names are displayed on the roll of honor exhibited in front of every postgraduate department. And also the college website and in the college handbook. The evidence of success. The success of the practice is evident from the impressive performance of the college in the said examination. During 2011-16, the period of uh, third cycle of NAC accreditation, a total of 130 student, uh, 36 students uh, qualified the net examination. The average number of net winners was less than 30 during this period. To our great joy and thanks to all set for net best practice, the number has remarkably increased. 2017, this number has crossed 50. During 2017-18, it was 50. 1890, it was 53. During 1920, it rose to 60. It is more than one third of total number of postgraduate students in a batch. Moving on to the next uh, best practice, namely social sensitization to blood donation. Uh, the context St. Joseph's College, Devagiri is located hardly a kilometer away from the government medical college, Calicut, the first medical college in the Malabar region of Kerala. As it is the biggest referral hospital in North uh, Kerala, thousands of patients from far and near uh, visit the medical college every day. Most of these patients, often brought uh, critically ill, are from the socially and economically weaker sections of the society. A large number of uh, surgeries are performed every day, and most of these patients suffering from cancer 
and blood related diseases uh, they require blood transfusion since these patients are poor and come from far off places the bystanders often find it difficult to arrange blood further assuring the safety of blood received received from family members or friends also is a problem as the college is adjacent to the medical college a large number of them approach this institution for blood initially students had hesitation to donate blood as they had several mis misconceptions about blood donation it is in this context that the nss units of the college volunteered to form a unit of blood donors for the college later blood donation under the leadership of blood donation forum emerged as one of the best practices on this campus currently the department of zoology is in charge of blood donors forum knowledge without character and science without humanity are among seven greatest dangers pointed out by mahatma gandhi therefore it is the responsibility of the education institutions to kindle the light of humanity within the hearts of the students the college considers voluntary blood donation as a very effective tool learning effective social learning uh, process the college which pursues the motto pro uh, pro deo et patria aims at grooming our students into accomplished citizens who are morally upright and socially oriented um, the objectives of this practice are given here practice uh, in the induction program organized at the beginning of the academic year a blood donation is introduced to the newly admitted students and their parents as one of the best practices with the immense social uh, learning potential immediately after the commencement of the classes the bdf with the technical support of of the pg department of zoology organizes a blood group uh, blood grouping camp to identify the blood group and to prepare a blood directory with the details of the students such as their names class blood group and contact numbers the forum also organizes a series of lectures and exhibitions to motivate the students to donate blood patients or bystanders that come with the proper prescriptions from the hospitals are directed by the staff or students to the coordinator of the forum the coordinator verifies the volunteers uh verifies the genuineness of the request and identifies a willing donor with the help of the forum volunteers the details of the donors are properly recorded in the register maintained it is the responsibility of the coordinator of the forum to arrange conveyance for the volunteers students uh, who donate blood are given relaxation of attendance for the day and each donation is considered equivalent to 3 days social service uh when the number of their uh, compulsory social service uh, days are calculated uh the college blood donors forum has set up chapters in the college hostels as well separate blood directories are maintained in the college host uh, hostels under the custody of the chairperson if patients approach the college on holidays or after the regular working hours blood will be arranged from the hostels the list of students who donate blood are exhibited in the forums notice board and those who donate blood frequently are given certificate of appreciation by the forum at the end of their academic program the forum tries to reach out to other blood donors forum outside the college by encouraging our students to be members in other forums as well so that a network of forums can be built up evidence of uh, success uh, the functioning of the forum has been very effective it was successful in removing the fear and misconception about donating blood thanks to the jealous effort of the fo uh, forum an average of 400, 400 units of blood per year was donated by our students during the last 4 years the service of the college in blood donation has been appreciated by the medical college and other hospitals Yeah, in the Calicut city, the gesture of gratitude in the eyes of the patients and their relatives is perhaps the greatest appreciation accorded to the donors.
uh, we can move on to the next best practice that is satsang an endeavor to illuminate we become what we meditate on it is disheartening to observe that today's society is polarized on different grounds and it is quite natural that there would be a reflection of this trend in the campuses as well St. Joseph's College Devagiri is fortunate enough to get the cream of students in terms of both academic and non-academic quality with a sterling character. Keeping in, track, track, uh, keeping in track the competitive world, the academic, uh, the pursuit of the students striving for excellence, adolescent issues, peer pressure, addiction to mobile phone and the social media, the college realized that an extra initiative has to be taken to mold the student's approach life in a holistic manner. As a first step, the initiative uh, gathered momentum among the hostel students, redefining them to reflect on the finer aspects of life. We borrowed a, this practice from Indian spirituality, namely satsang, which etymologically means to be in the company of true people. It did not say gathering of people who share noble thoughts and enlighten each other. It is indeed a profound thought to organize such satsangs in our hostels on an everyday basis. So these are the objectives of this best practice. When we come to the practice, uh, satsang gatherings are held in a hall exclusively assigned for this particular course where all the members of the hostel assemble at a stipulated time. And the mayor of the hostel, in consultation with the, the hostel warden, uh, prepares a schedule of students supposed to guide and enlighten the gathering. The students can talk on any topic, which could be sharing a life experience, an inspirational story, lives of eminent personalities or explaining a philosophical thought or a moral value etc there is an elevated platform set at one corner of the hall where a lamp is kept burning the person who enlightened the gathering shall sit on the platform and address the gathering the person assigned to speak on that particular day addresses on a topic of his or her choice for 10 minutes bearing in mind that one has to avoid sensitive or sensational issues, which could create tension or polarization in a group. At the end of the speech, there is time for interaction, uh, where others can also co complement to his message and share their ideas. The hostel warden will be present at every such gathering, and he will conclude the session with a piece of thought and advice. The evidence of success uh, uh, is a paradigm shift in culture among the hostel students is, is, is very much conspicuous. Regular attendance of the students show that they have happily accepted this practice. There is a healthy competition among the hostel inmates to present a better thought in a better way as their turn comes. The students encourage each other, appreciate values in life discourage the tendencies among their friends to get involved in unhealthy practice. So they were also found more loving, unified, and competitive. Students have more confidence in addressing people uh, and crowd at large without fear. As we move on to our next best practice, here we have green and transformative reformation. Uh, St. Joseph's College Thevagiri is certainly fortunate enough uh, to get the best prodigies in terms of academic quality, talents, and character. However, some cases of misconduct of students are reported occasionally. In such cases, it is imperative for the authority to take appropriate disciplinary uh, action against them. Dismissal, suspension, writing an apology, etc. were the common practices. However, at the end of the day, we don't find a qualitative change in his or her character. On the contrary, they become more rebellious and offensive. 
a serious reflection of the benefits and outcomes of this sort of disciplinary actions uh, forced us to resort to some alternative measures. The purpose of character reformation is improvement and not the degradation of the offender. The mode of punishment practiced in the campuses at times turns out to be destructive rather than transformative. It is in this context green and transformative reformation practices were introduced with an altruistic vision. The objectives are given here. To practice on the receipt of complaints uh, on the misconduct of students, the principal of the college decide whether the cases must be forwarded to the discipline committee or handle it by himself, depending upon the gravity of the issue. The merit of the complaint will be thoroughly examined by the discipline committee after addressing the offenders, witnesses, teachers concerned, the aggrieved persons as the case demands. If the student is found guilty, appropriate disciplinary action will be proposed by the committee. Green and transformative reformation practices are introduced as a path-breaking step from the shackles of the age-old punitive measures. One such practice is to instruct them to plant a sapling in the campus. The offender would be instructed to plant a sapling, put fencing to it, water it regularly, and take care of it as long as he or she is studying in the campus. The name of the tree, the location where it is planted, and the details of the student are entered in the register book. It is noted that the act has inculcated a sense of responsibility towards nature as well as towards themselves. If the case is found to be more serious, he or she will be instructed to visit the home of love an old age home which is situated uh, in the city. The offender has to render service for one or two days at the old age home with an accompanying staff to monitor the tasks assigned in such homes. He or she may be assigned tasks like hair cutting, cleaning an area, interacting with the inmates, conducting entertainment programs, so on and so forth. A growing sense of responsibility towards the society would bring a huge difference in the offender's life. The evidence of success. It was found that once the offenders are put to task, to our great, to our great surprise, one could witness a positive change in the attitude and character of those students. There were instances where students posted their photos engraving with my tree. The practice was found effective when the offenders accepted those compulsory services graciously express their willingness to visit and serve the inmates, their self-esteem boosted, and they were found reluctant to commit mistakes thereafter. Another best practice uh, is lunchtime concert. The Evergreen is endowed with a good number of gifted artists, which has enabled us to emerge as the winners at Sonal and university level arts competition. Our artists have also brought us uh, laurels by winning prizes in the All India Inter-University Arts Festival. Since only a few can represent the college in inter-college competitions, many of them do not get any opportunity to showcase their talents. Subsequent to the introduction of semester system, academic activities have become hectic with the frequent examinations, seminars, and other assignments. This has definitely added to the stress level of the students. Let's time concert is an attempt to utilize the artistic talents of our campus, provide the students with an opportunity to relax as well. These are the goals of uh, this best practice. With regard to the practice, uh, the college has an actively functioning fine arts club with a faculty as its coordinator. At the beginning of every academic year, application for membership is invited from students with artistic talents who are subject to uh, a, a screening. The members of the fine arts club regularly practice after the regular working hours. 
the club under the guidance of the coordinator prepares a schedule which specifies the turn and time of the members to perform. The lunch interval between 12.45 to 1.25 p.m. on every Wednesday is set aside for the concert. There is no fixed venue for this event. The coordinators will select a venue in advance and make arrangements for the event. The facilities including the sound system will be provided by the college. Different forms of fine arts like music, painting, mimicry, dance, etc. are performed during this event. Videos and photos of the concert will be circulated among the students and staff uh, by the fine arts club. The program schedule for the day shall be announced in advance. Students, teachers and non-teaching staff attend the program in large number. Evidence of success. The practice has been well accepted by the students and staff community. This is evident from the large numbers who assemble at the venue. Each performance is followed by active discussions about the program among the audience. Uh, the program is so successful that the campus looks forward to the next Wednesday ev after every concert. Our artists have remarked that this has positively contributed uh, to their confidence and quality of performance. The practice has offered our students a platform where they can spend their free time more creatively. It has also brought in a sense of cordiality among the students, which was evident in the smoothness, uh, smoothness with which the college uh, elections were uh, conducted. Finally, we move on to our last uh, best practice, namely research efforts beneficial to society um, and science. Uh, the research policy of the college clearly states that the research activities taking place in different departments uh, should be beneficial to the society. And it also should inspire uh, our youngsters, especially the research scholars, to take up subjects of benefit to local community. Here I would like to present a model in this regard. Uh, here the objective, uh, home uh, invasion of a noise and pest beetle that invades residential buildings uh, and stays indoor for five to six months. The case has already been explained by our principal, Dr. Sabuke Thomas. And, but uh, this case remained a puzzle since 1970s, all across the rubber plantation belts in Kerala. Uh, nothing is known about the identity, life cycle, and habits. And to control measures, and have no idea about the control measures, and uh, they affected people who are relying upon indoor application of pesticides. When we come to the practice, uh, this research uh, uh, the department has taken up uh, two research projects uh, from state's uh, science department uh, in this regard. And uh, they try to bring out a solution to the problem uh, during the period 2017. Uh, uh, they, were, they have been working on this from 2017 onwards, and they have come out with uh, solutions for this issue. Uh, the findings are shared uh, to the agriculture and forest departments and people uh, in the locality. And actually the 10 international publications in the ISI impact factor journals and scientific information about the mass uh, aggregation of behavior and attraction towards uh, specific buildings. So you can see the, the main publications uh, that have uh, come out with uh, this slide. So these are the seven best practices that we have uh, uh, formulated and successfully implemented in our campus over the, uh, uh, the last few years. Thank you. Yes, thanks, Dr. Antu. Joseph, it was nicely narrated, explained uh, things uh, in addition to your principal, Dr. Sabu Thomas also.
uh, what we pointed out here i have written something interesting i think so many of the institutions might be practicing but it is in a different way specifically your research achievement what you have narrated in this last two slides that is solution to the massive home invasion of beater that is a commandable i think so this such type of things should continue uh, further considering some several problems or issues in your area then you have also spoken about your principal has spoken about extension activity kerala flood covid 19 and one very good thing i like that sanitizer uh, being made from your chemistry department and you distributed uh, that's a good thing that can be continued uh, of course you can go with the production unit also related with that that will provide an employment also to the uh, students or many other people like that then mentoring with the parents concept you have explained social sanitization social sensitization okay ha huh? social sensitization through blood donation camp that is also you are making it happen in a massive scale on um, one very good quote you said about satsang we become what we meditate for it's true very well stated that and you people uh, uh, provoke your students to proceed with that satsang that's also good thing green and transformative reformation through disciplinary action oh, that is also means as a disciplinary action you make your students uh, to plant the sapling or that's it something very different uh, so in that way they become social also as a okay but i think so that's a reward that's not a discipline it's a good thing but very good thing commandable the other uh, faculty members other college can also implement and fine arts club also you make it possible that is an enjoyment for the both students and teachers and that shows that their involvement in the campus with so much of student that the 2506 uh, 2506 and 128th faculty is a good institution i have so few questions for you to ask but let the participants ask first question uh, i think samuel can you find any anybody hand raised so that they can ask the question mr samuel Dr. Sham, please see where is the Samuel till the time I will ask the question because he is there to host the webinar and he is there to see that who uh, has raised the hand to ask the question. Dr. Sham, I'll ask him. Ah, you just call him. In the meanwhile, I will ask some question. I was I am very much curious. See, uh, you have said that you have a good achievement related with the direct benefit research with the direct benefit to the society. and that's a commendable job what you have already stated that a uh, solution to the massive home invasion of battles it is uh, further you are your institution has a i think so a major science stream of course arts commerce science all the three streams are there that i have seen it but majority is a science stream do you have of any course. sort of patents and what sort of uh, efforts you are taking for the patent because it's an old institution and our country is very much in need of that type of concept innovation and creativity is the need of the hour and for your information you might be knowing uh, in 2011 when it was being uh, evaluated india ranked 17th in position with 5170 patents only as compared to the world leader like japan with 274000 patent and uh, america 272000 and china 174000 so we are quite behind so what are the efforts from your side your institution is taking to make it possible being a very aggressive and good institution yes please sir yes i will be answering the question okay so with regards to the patent and actually there are number of proven chemicals and uh, this particular insect you now people are not knowing how to control it so for that we analyze the uh, behavior and uh, from the established chemical so we cannot go for a patent there since it is already established there. we are not knowing to use which chemical because it is a indoor pesticide so what i saw united states department of agriculture in the iraqi war and all the soldiers use a particular chemical the one which uh, commonly used by the people for the uh, killing lice also that can be here and all So the same chemical. So, but since it's already patented and uh, it's a very well-known one, we we couldn't. We tried. We thought about it, but no. So, patent now we have limitations since it's compound. Uh, that is the one problem. Okay, no problem. But uh, yeah, I think so. You can provoke your uh, faculty members to think into this direction, not immediately, but in the long term it may happen. Just please think because uh, you are very cultured, very nicely devoted. 
and I think so specifically our criteria seven fully full fledged institutional values and social responsibility are moving ahead with only in this case in case of criteria three research innovation extension if you can more work on the part because you have an innovative faculty that will make a difference yeah we are uh, thinking let us, yeah let us see from participant samuel are you there Hmm. Lakshmi here, sir. Representing Samuel, sir. No problem. Please see if anybody has raised their hand so that we can question them. Sir, Dr. Konduru Ravi Teja, you can ask your question, sir. Dr. Konduru Ravi Teja, you can ask your question, sir. Okay, no problem. Next. Dr. Abu Bakr, sir, you can ask your question. Dr. Abu Bakr. Next. Dr. Shankar, you can ask your question, sir. Dr. Shankar. Yeah, yeah. Um, good morning, uh, Sabu Thomas. Sir, in most of the states in India, the aided vacancies are not being filled on a regular basis. How is uh, Devagiri uh, tackling this issue? I am from Andhra Pradesh, as you know. Okay. Sabu Thomas, sir. Yes, sir. Very happy to see you here. Yeah, see, we are fortunate because this issue exists in many parts of the southern states also, as I understand. But fortunately in Kerala, so far no appointment there. But this year always that will be tight because after the COVID and the economy is in bad shape and gone nearly badly a kind of situation. Okay, but there is the workload. So that what happened in my, my own department, two, three vacancies are coming up. That was so far, it has been good. So government has been permitted and we are having younger space and uh, yeah. Uh, attract very good research with the postdoc experience from abroad and out. So they're taking up number of projects also. Am I clear, Dr. Shanga? Is it clear? Yeah, yeah. Devendra uh, sir and uh, other uh, panelists and my friends. Uh, yeah. I think you see other states should follow, emulate to see what Kerala is doing, filling the vacancies on a regular basis. That would uh, be a shot in the arm for higher education and the NEP 2020. Mm. Good suggestion, sir. Okay, Pujay Lakshmi, next. Hello, Samuel. Dr. Sudapta Goshtar, you can ask your question. Dr. Sudapta Goshtas. Okay, he's not there, please, next. Dr. Abu Bakr, sir, you can ask your question, sir. Dr. Abu Bakr. Next. Uh, Dr. Kondura Raviteja, sir, I can see your. Dr. Kondura Raviteja, sir. No, no, no. Sir, I'm not. Uh, if anybody wants to ask any question, please raise hand in the app. Okay. So yes. oh, I will ask. Yeah, is there anybody or shall? Uh, uh, no, sir. There, I'm not able to see any hand raised symbols. Any participant but... who want to ask the question, you are requested to please raise the hand. It is in your portal itself, you can find there. Okay, till the time, one more question I will ask and if we find somebody, it's okay, otherwise we'll proceed further. One question is there is, uh, yes, of course, uh, employability related, employability enhancement program, you move ahead with, you have that uh, very famous ornamental fish farming and aquarium setting you stated. Uh, uh, Father, uh, that is, and one more thing you stated that plant propagation and terrace farming. Now, uh, my question is, uh, 
it's related with that you know sir we have a skill based concept we have our present government has come out with the skill ministry also related with that you understood what i want to ask we have only 2.3% of our workforce being skillful as though being surveyed by one of the institution being done as compared to some 96% of uh, um, south korea 80% japan 75% germany we have a very less uh, number of workforce that is skillful what are the efforts from your institution in addition to your this uh, traditional courses like ba bcom bsc and all that which you are running it's very nicely being done no doubt about the same because the future of the india wants the skill based people multidisciplinary concept which is very much being focused on in our neb draft document also how do you think that your institutions uh, will uh, take efforts or taking efforts for the future of our country specifically the students which will be coming out from here please sir for students coming out yes sir college no as i said skill based programs with mhrd support especially fortunately we are fortunate to have rusa support for that and the next phase also only six programs we are we just try to start but this year also again we are stuck up with the covid and all because you know, it's now online course are going on we thought we could uh, make a big move this year so definitely in ad some additional courses also like uh, certificate three months course six months course like that which is uh, uh in uh, in need of the surrounding belt okay that which is uh, good for the kerala and uh, its peculiar kind of climate with the very good countries with all different types of tourism and then agriculture and all so we have some courses in mind and so that is that's what exactly we are hopeful of and we are expecting the uh, percent batch of students to join for this course and from the nearby course also because recently state government helped us by bringing in the change in the time table that is from 8:30 to 1:30 all the college so the afternoon the class will be free so here for an afternoon we can make use of the time for these particular courses skill based courses so more and more courses we will be definitely thinking about it we wait for the next opportunity to so much and so much i hope i am clear good uh, dr sabu it's appreciable you are taking effort but one line i would like to say here and if you can answer related because kerala is a god's own country and rich in resources very much okay and so uh, there is a necessity of uh, more number of employers to be developed that can be uh, miss what are the efforts in that direction if the institution is taking how many uh, rather than job provoking if, if it is moving ahead with an employer concept there is a setting of food processing unit or likewise many other things can be there so any sort of steps you, your institution is being taken that can be a lesson for the other institution also please yes sir we have a lot of plans for that sir we have a good resource one example is the jack fruit it is actually so much with pineapple and so much uh, really available here and it is a very cheap here also yes and we have a uh, plans to go for process to food so some courses training courses will be support other so they say some three month or six month training courses and for that you know we need funds also so we look forward to um, the next phase of rusa in uh, in that trend so we are yeah. quite positive stuff and we want to because the elicities of people love fish so we know the great demand of fish and this is the idea so these friends of uh, the uh, cost of bell they can make use of their friends in agriculture but in the highlands so why not in that so the thoughts of water and then uh, land ponds are available so the fish they can market later so that's one idea similarly here also mango jack fruit and pineapple and all if they are able to make use and then added that birds on and we get lots of tourists and you know, many many of my uh, scientist colleagues from Rajasthan do that is why people are not making it there we like because mostly we are looking for opportunities in Kerala for going out and all but now it is also like us we know that we are all coming back and we have to create opportunity so we are telling our students also get your degree don't think about net pg and all around you can buy your plus two or degree itself or after plus two itself you can join one of these courses and that is the way so in all in all the new policy i think it is going to help us also thank you so adding, adding to these points um We, yes. have all, we have also started an incubation center last year in our college with the help of rusa fund Good. and uh, uh, many students have registered and joined this incubation center and we are uh, on the process of uh, making up the facilities for this in incubation center 
And uh, as the first step, uh, we have invited industrialists, uh, entrepreneurs, uh, etc., to the college and have uh, uh, given classes for these students to motivate them to make uh, their own uh, initiatives and join incubation center. Many students have uh, come forward uh, to join incubation center and they have shown interest in coming up with their own initiatives in this regard. Thank you, sir. Good, good uh, answer, Dr. Antu and Dr. Sabu. Uh, one more uh, achievement I have seen in your institution that uh, you have a good number of uh, students clearing net J JRF as compared to the, for example, what I have shared in the seen in that slide, 2,506 number of students are there and out of that 60 have cleared. It's a good number considering the proportion and with the, if we compare in any other institution. So these students who clear net set, let them go out uh, of the of your place all over the country and uh, spread the message what you people are doing that will be a much more big advantage we have to think pan india sir yes sir yes. Yes. Uh, so nice so nice uh, so commandable uh, achievements commandable work done uh, now continuing with the same uh, uh, with the program i request uh, and, uh, because the time is over i request uh, for a formal vote of thanks i request dr vinita sahu our assistant advisor to please give formal vote of thanks. Dr. Vinita, please. Thank you, sir. Uh, so as shared by Dr. Devendra Kavdi, sir, and others also, we indeed had, had a very good uh, best practice presentation today. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to begin my vote of thanks uh, with these words. And these uh, special lines goes to the coordinators specifically to Dr. Devender Kavde and H.V. Chandrasekhar, who had, who had taken untiring efforts in organizing this best practices series. So I would uh, just say this a few lines uh, for the organizers specifically to this program. It does not matter where you go and what you study. What matters most is what you share with yourself and the world. So uh, it is with these thoughts uh, we have organized this best practices series. So whatever good institutions are doing, uh, this can be shared with the uh, other institutions also, so they can adopt these best practices uh, uh, and then can uh, do wonders in the field of higher education. So uh, to begin with, first of all, I would like to express uh, uh, sincere uh, thanks to our Honorable Director, Sir, Professor S.C. Sharma, Sir, for his guidance and encouragement in conducting this best practices webinar series. We are also thankful to all the advisors, uh, uh, deputy advisors, assistant advisor, all the NEC officials and various departments for their endeavors uh, in conducting such programs. We are thankful, uh, thankful and a special note of thanks to the coordinator and convener of this particular program, uh, Dr. K. K. Rama, Dr. Devender Kavre, deputy advisor NEC, Professor uh, uh, H. V. Chandrasekhar sir, could, uh, admin consultant uh, for their untiring effort in organizing this program. We are indebted to ICT team uh, headed by Professor Amya Kumar Rath, uh, advisor NEC, and ably uh, supported by Mr. Samuel for providing all the technical uh, support for conducting this uh, webinar series. We are also uh, thankful uh, from the institution side uh, to the principal, sir, Dr. Sabu Thomas and to the vice principals, uh, Dr. Uh, Father Antonio, uh, Anto Joseph, uh, for uh, helping us and supporting us uh, in organizing this program. And we had a lot of interaction with them uh, before we uh, could finally conduct this program uh, regarding the presentations, uh, uh, presentation and other details. So they have really supported us very well and uh, thank you for their whole team and to the various stakeholders of the St. Joseph College Kerala for having organized this program and uh, uh, last but not the least we are thankful to all the participants who had made, made this event a uh, good success. Thank you one and all. Have a nice day ahead. Thank you sir. So nice Dr. Vinita. Thank you. Um, I request to all the participants an announcement that we are continuing with this series of webinar day after tomorrow, that is 27, one more institution from again uh, south is there and on 31st also we have uh, this uh, webinar from different institution on different theme. Please attend it, take the benefit of the same and it will be helpful to improve the quality in higher education all over the country, that is our motto. So many thanks, thanks Dr. Sabu, thanks Dr. Joseph. Uh, for providing your uh, thought process related with the best practice adopted. Uh, 
uh, a big congratulation to all your faculty members and the students who have come out with this good concepts and making your institutions a good one with the price. Thank, so, thank you. Namaskar. Thank you, Samuel. We can close the session. Yes, sir.